Mongoose Jake here with a video featuring a little bit of everything from World of Tanks. Uh, of course, this is me playing my Jagdpanzer IV on Fjords. And I am going to take up a fairly typical position on the new map here. But as you can see, right off the bat, we have one artillery who's already drowned. Now, that's not the beginning, or that's just the beginning of the the craziness that this team has. It's definitely not the end of it. But, you see myself in this SU-85, we're just sitting here covering the uh, main area, and we see, I see that uh, there's some shots being fired behind me, and so you see I've got the camera panned around. This is unedited. I was watching behind me, keeping an eye on this T-34. It's the Chinese version, the Type T-34. Because as you've seen, I had a shot fly over me, and it really caught my attention. And now our own artillery was marking that he's targeting that area behind me. And if you watch this, the M41 is actually getting chased by the T-34. And don't know what in the world's going on. It's like actually trying to play the game here, but we've got a Type T-34 running around messing with our artillery. Now you can see I, I'm very distracted. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to keep my eye on the battlefield, but I don't know what in the world's going on. And this uh, SU-85, he fires too close to the bush, and he gets spotted. And as he's pulling back, of course, he's still spotted. And I have never been spotted. I take a hit from an E-25 hidden over there because he had pulled, the SU-85 pulled in behind me. So they're still shooting at him. So I've never been spotted. And you see how I'm clicking, there's the E-25 in the bushes there. The E-25, all he's done is he's went up the little road slightly. And all, all the while, our artillery finally took out the uh, blue Type T-34. Now keep your eye on the mini-map. Our Churchill has decided not to fight, but he is actually driving back towards base. I, I do get spotted there, and I, I'm going to decide to bail out. Because I'm looking, it's like the Churchill, he's turned blue this whole time. And he killed one of our artilleries while the artillery killed him. Of course, the artillery was in the right in you know, being able to shoot a, a blue tank. But that has now left the middle wide open. And I had noticed that. So I, I'm coming down here to try to cover. Because there had been a, a PZ-4. And with that Panzer IV coming up this way. I had thought he was going to continue on. But he actually went in behind our heavies. Who are actually trying to play the game. But I put one shot into him and he backs up behind cover. But I'm trying to do my best to help the, the heavies that are now isolated in the south. And we've lost two-thirds of our team. Of course, we had two people turn blue, and our artillery drowned, and they team killed one of, the, one of the blue tanks, which now you notice that they're in a platoon. And, of course, chats are going on and on and on. I'm trying to get the Tiger P to fall back. So that maybe the the enemy heavies will come around. And I do have premium loaded at this point. Because now it's all or nothing. But I'm trying to get him to fall back, but I notice that there's a sweet stain store that all of a sudden just ran in. And I put it get a couple hits into him. But he he's quick enough he gets into cover before I get the killing shot. So now we have three people, three enemies, to the south. And my teammates to the north are holding on as best they can. But, but they're exposed to artillery fire, so I'm sure they're getting beat to death by that. And being flanked at the same time. I'm keeping my front pointed to where I know the enemies are going to be coming from. But I'm going to reverse and get back behind cover. I don't want to be caught out there in the open. 
because those three, they can easily just rush me. So just keeping the gun to the front, so that in case they do show up, I can get a shot off. I'm going to back into these buildings. Now, I haven't seen them show up. Now, especially with the Challenger going down, I need to try to help my teammate. And I noticed this Crusader right here. I'm just going to lean over, auto-aim, and when I see the reticle get onto him, I'm going to take him out. Then I need to immediately turn around. And now it is 9 to 14. There are six enemies left. So this, is, this battle has already had a bit of everything. And I take out the tier 7 heavy, the AMX M445. And of course they know I'm here now. Because even if Sixth Sense or not, they, he knows that he just got shot and killed. So if the, enemy, if the enemy team's paying attention, they'll know that I'm in position. And here comes the KV-85. Which, it doesn't have the greatest armor in the world, but the turret can be very, very uh, trollish on the fact that the shape of it, where it's rounded a lot. And I'm starting to get the sense of... I need to watch my back. Sure enough, right there is the LKV. He gets a shot into me before I turn around. But he's down. And something to keep in mind, the KV-85 has terrible gun depression. He's not going to be able to come up this hill at me without me getting the first shot in. And he actually put the shot in the dirt, so I was able to get my return shot into his cupola. So now... I realize now, okay, this is doable. There's three artillery, and as long as I don't make the mistake of going out in the open, I'm still spotted for 10 seconds, roughly. That's, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, once you're spotted, you're still spotted for roughly about 10 seconds or so. So I fake going one way, then the other, and then uh, I shouldn't have hit the tree, but I'm kind of trying to ignore chat. I just will agree just to get the guy to stop because I've got the map pinger going nuts already. But this is the best position. I mean, he may be a little annoying with his clicking, but this really is the best position to get into at this point. Two of the three enemy artillery are quick. You got the Lorraine, the Tier 7, and then you got the M44. Both of those are fairly mobile vehicles. You know, forget their artillery, but they can easily move all around the map. Now the grill is not. So he is most likely going to either stay at the base or he's going to move up slowly through the middle of the map would be my suspicion. And the fastest one is the first one I spot, the rain. Now he's working his way up from the south and I thought maybe he had sixth sense because he went off of my he went off of my uh, sight range here, so he must have paused. And the M44, I don't think he has six cents, because he got spotted, didn't move, until I hit him. So he's gone. Now Lorraine's moving in, because he must have thought that, well, if I killed the M44, I must be over there. But this crew I have in this Jack Panzer IV is quite well trained. As you can see, you know, I have very good uh, camouflage and view range. You can tell by the green and the white circles. Green being spotting range and white being detection. And this guy is still clicking back there. It's like, no, at this point, at this point, those are the two fast artillery. With them dead, the grill is not fast. He is either going to be moving straight up the middle or he's still going to be stuck out there at the typical spot on the peninsula, at the very southeast corner of the map. Now I'm going to approach this carefully, because with under half health, there is the potential that the grill could finish me off with a hit. If he was able to land a shot onto my roof, like near the engine deck, it'd be possible. So I'm not going to just go charging in. I'm going to take my time. There's plenty of time left in the battle. And this central uh, little hill 
gives a good way to get eyes all over the middle of the map. Because like I was saying, I suspect the, that the grill, he's either going to be just planted in place and he's going to have forgotten the whole part of SPG with the P meaning propelled, and he's just going to be sitting still, as it's basically a turreted artillery gun, or he's going to be slowly moving up through the middle. Now even if he's in the bushes over there, even if I can't spot him, if I sit up here and my sixth sense goes off, then I'll know where he is, because he would have to be over in those bushes uh, at the uh, western side of the mountain there for him to be able to spot me. Well, neither thing happened. I didn't spot him, and I also didn't get spotted. That means he's probably still back behind his base. So that's why you see me not pause too long, and I just get motoring along. And it's quite simple. I, I, I'm just keeping an eye on my sixth sense, just in case he is over to the left in heavy shrubbery. Because if he's up there to my left, he would spot me at this point. So now we got the map pinger pinging the base. He was the one wanting me to stay back there at B1 the whole time. And if I did that, the, the worst thing is this grill. Obviously now, he's the kind of player who's not going to move. So if I had stayed back there, this would be a draw. Now all it is, is I'm not going to chase him down. There's no point. Because I do firmly believe, you can see I'm keeping my gun aimed in that direction of the peninsula. I firmly believe at this point, he's over there. And if I go driving over there, he's going to get the first shot advantage. As I start rolling over the hills there, if he's down in behind, at the end of the peninsula, he'll spot me coming over the hill and he will get the first shot. Before I'm able to put my gun down towards him. So I'm not going to risk it. I mean, I would like the Bradley Walters, but the win's more important at this point. With all that's went on, with the team-killing platoon, with artillery drowning at the start, which it showed that he drowned, but I fully suspect he might have even been pushed in. Even though it didn't register that way, but for me at this point, I'm just simply going to sit tight, let my camouflage values, and with my binoculars activated, I'm going to probably spot him first, and there comes a shot in, which tells me he is down at the very end of the uh, peninsula down there, and he's just going to take shots, trying to place him into the base, trying to reset me with a blind hit, and at this point, he's not going to get it done. And as the timer ticks down, there's one last shot for the win. Now we can go on and I'll let you take a look at the result screens. That was a, an ace. I got the Fire for Effect ribbon. And I got Pascucci's. And there's the big one, Kolobanoff's. Also got Tank Sniper, High Caliber. Got the... Uh, Invader and Top Gun. I didn't get Radley Walters, but I just had under 2,000 damage and a little over 1,000 experience. And our Challenger also had a really nice game there. But on the contrary, there's the Type T-34 for you to see. He, he actually managed to do way more harm than good. And so did his uh, buddy in the Churchill down there, which I'll bring up here. To combine, they were more effective enemies than some of the enemies were. Which I find to be just a little bit of everything in World of Tanks. This battle kind of showcased everything you could possibly see. You had team killing, you had drownings, and you had a couple of people who were struggling to try to carry the game for the rest of the team. But this is Mongoose Jake with Colabano's Battle and the Jagdpanzer 4 on Fjords. Thanks for watching.